Taylor Swift Midnight's album review. Let's chat about it. Hey friends, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about this latest album from Taylor Swift, who needs no introduction. She is an artist who, uh, for some time, was just not into. I I'm sorry. My, my feelings on Taylor over the years are pretty mixed. In her early sort of country uh, days, uh, she literally epitomized everything that I did not like in modern uh, country. And, you know, as far as her more pop-related material goes, her next five or six albums, I mean, I'm not going to lie, there's singles here and there that I actually love. But as far as a full album goes, I've never considered myself a fan. Which leads me to the last few years of Miss Taylor Swift, which, you know what, I'm gonna just sit here and say, as a bearded man with a beanie and a beard on, I actually kinda like uh, her indie stuff quite a bit. Folklore is so incredibly tasteful. Exile, just thinking about the track, it gives me the damn chills. And it also just seemed so damn authentic, which is what really you know, stuck out to me. Just her love and appreciation for the music that she was creating at the time. Uh, and Evermore, which came out shortly after, I thought was just as good, even not better in points. Which leads me to this new album, Midnight. It's a much poppier release at the end of the day, which kind of worried me from a distance. But, you know, I'm going to say this. As far as her pop material goes, this actually is not that bad. Lavender Haze as an intro, I really like it quite a bit. It's got a little bit of an edge to it, much like the album cover here. It's moody, it's sassy, it's got a little swagger to it too. I love the hook, I love the surprisingly crunchy production, and Taylor just sounds like she's handling herself really well. For a more pop-oriented direction from Taylor, once again, I'm all for this. It's actually a really great start. Anti-hero all around. This is a great song. It's personable. It's reflective. It's incredibly sweet on the ears. I mean, since day one, she has always worn her heart on her sleeve. That's been one of the biggest talking points of Taylor. But even this seems like the next step up. It's a huge statement and a really great single. Uh, Snow on the Beach featuring Lana Del Rey, it took me a little while to kind of ease up to it. It's a little bit more quiet and much more cinematic than a lot of this album. But it ends up being this meditative, very cold, shockingly cold track that actually really gets into a groove and doesn't let go. It's actually mesmerizing and a wonderfully done alt pop gem. Then we have your On Your Own Kid, which in a lot of ways sounds like her early material, but just a little more grown up, which is cool by me. Instrumentally, it also does take from a lot of the folky elements of her last two albums, but it's all about Taylor, her delivery, her stories, and just her. And that low-key synth pop melody, there's a lot of those on this album. It's just enough to keep this track a little fresh. I really do like Midnight Rain too. This tr album does have a sort of alternative pop flair to it. Maybe your thing may not be, but it's still here, and this is a big part of it. It's just as well wrote, but it's oddly gloomy, and it has a grittiness to it. And once again, there is a very vast cinematic sound to this, but it's still really mature and really well wrote. And as far as a deep cut goes, look no further than Question. I think it's the best track here. I love the intense lyrical performance we get here. Taylor sounds so focused. A lot of the very subtle synths here work really nicely. And I have to once again commend just how revealing and incredibly personal this is. So as far as a more Taylor Swift pop album goes, this isn't that bad at all. There's a lot of great material on here. My issue is that Taylor at the end of the day doesn't really come through with a complete thought. Maroon in my book is a bit of a miss. I do like the chilly, minimal synth pop beat that we get here. That's pretty cool. But Taylor's low energy, very methodical approach to this track is just not where I like to hear her. Even this chorus just doesn't really pop in in any way whatsoever. It's just very middle of the road. Sorry, y'all. I know a lot of people love it, but vigilante shit is not for me. Listen, this minimal, booming beat is something different for sure, and it's actually pretty cool. And I commend how fired up she is, because she is fired up here. But why can't I buy it? Listen, she's been pissed off plenty in the past. But then I hear this, and it just comes off kind of campy and goofy, and like she's taking too much of a leap here, and I just, I don't buy it. And don't hate me, I don't like Bejeweled either. This genuinely sounds like one of her poppier early albums, with maybe just a little more swagger thrown in. I don't know, this just doesn't hit me as hard as so many of the other tracks here. Not only that, but the instrumental doesn't hit me at all. A, a sweet nothing late in the album just infuriates me so much. I mean, it's a quaint, sort of ho-hum, very lazy day, 
pop ballad and it's just it's not for me it's way too cute it's way too airy the harmonies aren't up to snuff this just doesn't sound like it fits on this album at all these are some pretty big issues because these tracks are pretty awful and they really do take a lot out of this album but i still think it's certainly better than where she's come from labyrinth has a late album treat it's one of the best tracks here i love the subtle sort of twilight beat that we get here as well as her performance which is simply angelic it may be as far as a vocal performance goes her best one here for a slower sound watch that for a slower sound this is how you do it folks this is how you do it on this album this is how you write a mature love ballad at this point in taylor's career i really love karma as well it's very heavy synth heavy beat is so good it gives this album a little bit of an edge and it brings it just a little bit more cool as well and yes there's some cheesy lines on here. I don't want to talk about it. But I think that she owns it. I think she performs it well. And it ends up being a very glamorous pop tune. It's also just way too catchy for its own good. And Mastermind, uh, while short and sweet as a finale, I think it really, you know, does a great job of summing up this album's sound. It's one of the most intricate and sleekest instrumentals here. It is freaking cool, and Taylor just sounds so commanding in her performance. It's just where I wanted to hear this album roll out. Honestly, it's not the best Taylor Swift album, and personally, for me, I enjoyed what she was doing in the indie folk world a little bit more than this, but as far as a pop album goes from Taylor Swift, this one's a little grittier, a little bit more cinematic, it's personal, it's well-wrote and well-performed, and yeah, the bad tracks are god-awful, and it's not as consistent as I hoped, and I wish she maybe made a bit of a bigger statement here, but still... As far as a pop album goes from Taylor Swift, this is certainly not a bad one. I'm feeling a very light 7 on this album, but let me know what you all think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, friends.